Hello and welcome to Double Portion 52 Weeks. Today is actually Friday, July the 19th. Yeah, Friday, July the 19th. Uh, I normally do the recordings on Wednesday. However, this week, Wednesday, uh, we had prayer in the evening. I had a lot going on here at work. I wasn't able to do it. And then at prayer, Wednesday night, on the floor, the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to me and confirm. He actually had given me the scripture on Sunday for us to share and I studied it out, but I didn't hear clarity. And one thing I'm going to tell you, I don't want to go forward. I don't want to talk just to talk. I need to say what thus says the Lord. And this is also a prayer line. So we're praying according to the word of God. So I hear where God is telling me to go in the word and then release what he said. And then we pray through it. Also, by listening to the, uh, the exhortations in the word, when you pray, you now have, you're equipped with the weapons of your warfare that are not carnal. You're equipped to know how to wield the sword of the word in your life and deal with anything, whether you're using the sword to cut back the flesh or you're using the sword to ward off the enemy, you now know how to do it. But like I said, God hadn't given me clarity as to how to release this word. I know it has something to do with the heavens being framed and the heavens being in your heart, but I just didn't have clarity and I wouldn't, I couldn't do the recording. I have been listening all this week. Um, something that Holy Spirit has me working on is pride, how pride is sneaky, it's subtle, it's deceptive. And we have to be on guard all the time against the spirit of pride. In volume three, Renewal of the Mind, there's a whole section on renewing our mind as to what pride is. There's a godly pride and then there's the fleshly pride. The fleshly pride is very loud and boisterous. It's all over the place. The flesh wants what it wants. It doesn't care that spiritually or morally it's incorrect. It's going to try and convince you as in Romans 7 there is this battle going on there's a law going on the law of sin and death but then there's Jesus that came to deliver us from the law of sin and death but now that Jesus has come and he sent Holy Spirit as our comforter our strengthener our friend our advocate our intercessor our standby we now must be led by the spirit instead of by the flesh it's an age-old battle we just dropped in it and we come here week after week getting our double portion, understanding our portion, our inheritance, our legacy, our heritage in the word week after week, understanding how to be led by the spirit instead of the flesh. Amen. I know I just said a lot in three minutes. Good Lord. So we're going to, I may not be the whole 20 minutes or we're going to worship at the end. We're going to worship at the end. Simultaneously with all of these things that are going on, a lot of you know that I am a minister of dance. I'm not a praise dancer. I'm a minister of dance. And the thing about being a minister is it's meeting the needs of the people. And then that I do it in dance, it's interpretive. I can release kingdom, open kingdom portals and realms into the heavenlies through dance. And it's because the word that's in me, ah, the word that's in me comes alive and I'm releasing it. So there is a song that I will be ministering this weekend, uh, Heaven on Earth. And, and want us to see it. And what it's asking for is thy kingdom come. So let's just hear the two scriptures that God gave me on Sunday. And then I have a piece that I want us to see in here that's relating to heaven on earth. Even the song combination, the way the Holy Spirit has given it to me with Psalm 24 about lift up your heads, O ye gates. And then understand you're lifting up your heads for the king of glory to come in and even for um, the kingdom to be made manifest. Even the gentleman that helped me with my cover, he put a silhouette here because see, Jesus doesn't have a, a natural face. The, these pictures that we do, I mean, that, that may be what you saw, but God is saying, the king, be kingdom ready for thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We want the king of kings to have access in our lives. So hold up, back up, pump the brakes, Paulette. You're getting excited, going ahead of yourself. Let me give you these two scriptures. The first one is in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11 out of the Amplified. It says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. He also has planted eternity in men's hearts and minds. And the Amplified expounds on what does it mean that God has planted eternity in men's hearts and minds. It's a divinely implanted sense of a purpose 
working through the ages, which nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy. Are you longing for something that no matter what you do or try, it can't satisfy that longing? It's because only God can, because he's planted eternity in men's hearts and heavens. The kingdom of heaven is nigh. It's at hand. It's in your heart. It's shed abroad in your heart. And so, and that is a divinely implanted sense of a purpose working through the ages with nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy, yet so that men can't find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. You can't find out apart from Christ. You can't find out through the tree of knowledge of good and evil. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 9, there were two trees in the center of the garden. It was the tree of life, which is the tree of Jesus, and then there was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The original instructions, you can eat of a tree in this garden, except for the knowledge of good and evil. And because they disobeyed God, tried to be like God apart from God, because the deception of the enemy says, you ain't going to die. You actually will be like God if you do that. So she was trying to be like God apart from God, not listening to the instructions. How many of us are trying to be like God, but don't want to do it the way God said, do it? How did God say, do it? He said, count it all joy considering the fiery trials that you're going through. He said this light momentary affliction is nothing to be compared to the glory that will be revealed. Well, I want the glory, but I don't want to go through all of that, Paulette. He said in this world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Mm. How did I get here? He said that persecution will come because of the word. So many of us, the person, we get in the word, the persecution comes, and we like to see it on the shallow ground. We done. I don't want to do the word no more. But God, be consistent and persistent with the word of God in your life. Even, you know, I heard Bishop Sellers preached on this Sunday. The message was increase, increase, increase. God wants to increase, but you got to be consistent. You got to understand, yes, it can't be known anywhere but in the tree of life. It can't be known anywhere but through knowing Jesus Christ. And that increase principle that he talked about is found in Luke chapter 2. He honed in on verse 52, but I want you to see Luke chapter 2 verse 40 and then again at verse 52. This is Jesus. He's our example. We call ourselves Christians. That's Christ-like. We're being like Christ, like Jesus. Like what would he do? He grew in wisdom and knowledge and understanding with God and with man. He grew. He grew. We must mature in the things of God. And I wasn't even going to go here. But let me just, I, I hear God. I told y'all I wasn't sure exactly how this was going to go tonight. But I want us to see this about how he grew. It said, uh, there were this, this, I'm reading something out of a book by Derek Prince about being a prayer warrior. And he quoted Hebrews 7, verse 24 through 25. And so these verses offer a rather interesting perspective on the timeline of Jesus' life. He spent 30 years in obscurity, in perfect family life. Mm. Now, he had a, uh, the right kind of perfect family life. Some of us had an interesting kind of family life. But anyway, he spent 30 years in obscurity. He spent 30 years growing and maturing in favor with God and man. Favor, wisdom, stature is what it was saying. So he spent those 30 years in obscurity. And then he spent three and a half years in a dramatic, powerful ministry. So it took 30 years of preparation. It's taking too long. I done did this. I've been doing this. For... Okay, you think you're different? You any better than Jesus? It took 30 years of preparation. For three and a half years of dramatic, powerful ministry. But look at what Jesus said. It goes on to say, now he has spent nearly 2,000 years in intercession. He is our intercessor. Mm, Jesus. So that was just a sidebar that I wanted us to see. Yes, according to Ecclesiastes 3.11, God has planted eternity in men's hearts and in our minds. And so the kingdom of heaven is shed abroad in our hearts. Our, we're born again and renewed. Our hearts are born again with access to, the, access to the tree of life. But if you don't be diligent, mm, go back and listen to some of these other recordings about what diligence will do for you. 
So he's given us access into the, he, he's planted eternity in the hearts of men. And then in Isaiah 51, verse 16, I, I challenge you to read the whole Isaiah 51 on this week. I'm not going to go into all of it, but ooh, as I was reading it, I was seeing some stuff. But verse 16 is the key. And the New King James verse 16 says, I have put my words in your mouth. I have covered you with the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundation of the earth. And so God is planting the heavens. Now, in this other verse, he planted eternity in our hearts. And then in this verse, he's saying, I planted the heavens. Um, the Amplified of verse 16 says, I have put my words in your mouth. You see why it's so important that we do like Psalm 19 verse 14 when it says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. He's watching what's going on in our heart as well as in our mouth because the kingdom is shed abroad in our heart and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Are you speaking kingdom? Are you speaking doubt? Are you speaking mixture? Are you speaking church? Are you speaking the doctrine of men? Or are you speaking what thus says the Lord? Mm. Anyway, so verse 16, 51, 16 of the Amplified, I have put my words in your mouth and have covered you with the shadow of my hand that I may fix or plant the new heavens as a tabernacle and lay the foundation of a new earth and say to Zion, you are my people. Do you want to be called? Well, I say this all the time when I pray. You are our God and we are your people. We're letting God know that we understand you're in control of this thing. I'm only here because you kept me here because I messed it up and should have been gone so much. Let me back up one other verse I want us to see again. Read all of Isaiah 51 if you have it. But verse 6, it says, Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall be dissolved and vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment. And they that dwell therein shall die in like manner like gnats. But my salvation shall be forever and my rightness and justice and faithfully fulfilled promise shall not be abolished. And so we have to understand, stop fixating on the natural, even the natural dirt suit and the flesh. We got to get out of that and go think into heavenly realms. I'm tapping into the next book that I'm writing. Verse 7, it said, listen to me, you who know rightness and justice and, and right standing with God, the people in whose heart is my law and my instruction, fear not the reproach of men, neither be afraid nor dismayed at their rivalings. And so I'm telling you, read all of Isaiah 51 on your own. What's my instruction from you this week? Read Isaiah 51 on your own. Read it in the Amplified or the Message or, or the uh, Passion. A lot of people are reading it in the Passion right now. And understand that God wants, several times in this chapter, he's saying, listen, listen, listen. At verse 4, he says, listen to me. The Lord, O my people, and give ear to me, O my nation, for a divine law will go forth from me, and I will establish my justice for a light to the people. The nature of God is justice. If there's some things going on in your life, let God vindicate you. He's the one that's going to bring justice. And so, with my last few minutes, if you have this book, Kingdom Ready, Thy Kingdom Come, um, I'm going to just go into a section here uh, looking at portals and glory, the glory of God and the manifestation of God. And even as um, Apostle Craig Cobbs is talking about um, uh, assignment and alignment and being aligned and being an assignment, you are a glory carrier. Apostle uh, Cedric White is talking about being glory carriers and you're here to carry the glory of God. And so there's a section in here um, at section 5.4 where I'm talking about gateways and portals and angels. And so you have access into the heavenly realm while you're here in the earth. That's why we pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done. But then uh, so also about the glory. So I'm on the bottom bottom of page 142 and I want us to see that we are current. my God Bishop Sippy I didn't even see that word increase right there so I'm gonna start at 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 and 18 now the Lord 
is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, which is emancipation from bondage and freedom. And all of us, as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, we are continuously being transfigured into his very image in an ever increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another from for this comes from the lord who is the spirit increase God wants you to increase in the glory of God as you look in the mirror of the word, as you cut back the flesh, as you wash in the water of the word, as you eat the milk of the word, as you eat the strong meat of the word, as you exercise your faith in the word, as you run this Christian race, ah, you will increase, increase in splendor, increase. So God is a spirit. This was what I was writing. He is a spirit as in John 4, 24. And this mention of the mirror is not referring to a looking glass, which is earthly and only has the ability to look at the dirt suit, which is not what is being referred to as created in his image. Remember, you're created in his image, not the dirt suit, your spirit. Uh, it is our spirit man which was created in his image, and we are to worship him in spirit and in truth, in reality. As glory carriers, we shift atmospheres. Also, with this supernatural acceleration comes exposure that brings persecution, yet endure with kingdom standards and principles. Persecution brings exposure and acceleration. We can see examples of this all throughout the book of Acts, but I want to hone into chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, verse 24 through 30. I'm not going to read it all. I'm going to jump down to verse 27. It says, so that they should seek God in the hope that they might feel after him and find him, although he's not far from each one of us. For in him, we live and move and have our being. And so I would, that's, I quoted a bunch of scripture that I'm not reading. Read it on your own. Acts 17, verse 24 through 30. Increase, keep in mind, increase, increase of kingdom, understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. Increase of your kingdom come, your will be done as you read Acts chapter 17, verse 24 through 30. But I went on to say, we see above that we have a destiny and a purpose, but we have to seek God to be able to connect with it and walk it out. As in verse 27, when it says, seek God, you got to seek God to connect with your destiny. The Psalm 139, 16 destiny that God has for you. We also see the truth that is in him. Uh, that it is in him that we live, move, and have our being at verse 28. And lastly, that God will continue to ignore the, uh, he will not continue to ignore idolatry and ignorance of his people. I want to read that verse because some of us have idols in our life and we don't even realize we have idols. Your religion is your idol. Going to church is your idol. Looking good is your idol. Your children have become your idol. Being married is your idol. Being single is your idol. Your job is your idol. Anything on the seat of your heart, anything that you put above God is an idol. And so verse 30 said, such former ages of ignorance, God, it is true, ignored and allowed to pass unnoticed. But now he charges all people everywhere to repent, to change their minds for the better and heartily to amend their ways with the abhorrence of their past sins. I pray that you glean something and you are empowered to press into the kingdom and allow his kingdom come, his will be done in your life. God, we thank you for your word. And I'm just going to close out this recording with just a little piece of this song that will be ministered about heaven on earth. Something's moving, something's changing. See his glory. It's like heaven on earth. God wants you to experience the heavenly realms. And the only way you will experience it is to acknowledge him in all your ways. To get out of the flesh. Don't let the flesh lead you. Be led by the spirit. Be led by the Spirit. Yeah. Allow Him to change you. Allow Him to rearrange you. Allow Him to have His way in your life. It's not about you. Ah, she even goes on in this song and she says, Something's moving and changing, and even if the something is me, change me, God. Change me from the inside out. Help me re re renew my mind and, and move away from the past sins and idolatry. 
move in my life like lightning and thunder, miracles and wonder, the sounds of many water. That's heaven on earth. Can't even describe it. Jesus, have your way in our lives. And then when they cry out, oh, that's tapping into the heavenly realms. That's saying, I don't even know what I'm doing, but I'm going to cry out to you. Oh, heaven on earth. Yeah, yeah. God, we thank you. Your kingdom come, your will be done in our lives. Each and every day of our lives. Have your way, oh God. Have your way in the life of every person that is connected and faithfully watching the 52 weeks of double portion. That they would understand their portion in you and that you desire for them to walk in a double. That's increase. Increase your people. Increase your presence.